it is my pleasure to introduce the uh, principal for the school, Ms. Um, Tav Tavali. <laughs> if you yes. would like yeah, to say you got it. Word. Thank you. Yes, you got it. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Great. And now and, um, let me introduce the trustee for this area, uh, trust, Trustee Joe Carrion. Would you like to say a few words? Yes. Well, yes, I will. Thank you so much uh, uh, for the introduction and for setting up this meeting here tonight. Uh, for anyone on the phone call, I recognize a lot of a lot of friends here on the on the Zoom. But for anyone that doesn't know me, uh, my name is Joe Carrion. I have the privilege of representing um, uh, the uh, arts uh, uh, vanguard here and other schools and what we call Dallas ISD District 8. And so I'm just here tonight to kind of see the presentation with you all and uh, listen in on your questions. But if you have any co comments you want to make with me offline, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I want to give you my phone number right now. If you have a pen or paper available, I'll give you my phone number right now. That is a 469 544-6764. That's a 469-544-6764. And again, any questions you may have on this project or anything else happening in Dallas ISD, I'm your school board representative and I want to make myself available. Thank you. Thank you. And now, um, Chief uh, Brent Alfred. If you'd like and, to say a few words and uh, you know take us into the rest of the meeting. Yes, thank you, Mary Corman. Uh, thank you, Morales community. I am Brent Alfred. I'm the Chief of Construction uh, for Dallas ISD. And it is my pleasure and honor to present this uh, zoning change to you today, as well as um, show you guys some of the improvements you're getting in the 2020 bond program. And I want to thank you again for your support for the 2020 bond program. This would not be possible without your support or the support of your trustee, uh, Joe Carrion. So I want to give everyone kudos. But with that, like I say, without further ado, uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, our zoning consultant, uh, Carl Crowley. He's going to kind of take you through our agenda and then to our architects. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Brent. Um, as Brent said, my name is Carl Crawley. I'm with Master Plan. We're the uh, zoning consulting firm, zoning and land use consulting firm for this school uh, campus. Um, the uh, What we're here tonight, um, uh, you probably got a, a postcard for me. I apologize if you did, but um, uh, that means that you're in the area notification for the zoning case that when it comes up, um, the city of Dallas requires um, zoning for um, public schools if they're located in a residential district, and this is a residential district. When the school was built, um, zoning wasn't required for a school, but since we're doing this addition, um, we have to bring the zoning up to um, up to what the code requires. Um, so uh, you, this is uh, our community meeting, get some input from y'all about the zoning. Um, there will be a city plan commission hearing probably in the November, December timeframe. Then there'll be a city council hearing after that. You'll get a notice if you're within 500 feet of the school uh, on, on each of those hearings. Um, and that will be your uh, time to um, either go to the public hearing or um, they still do them virtually and they probably still will when that comes about and you can get involved in that time. But um, I don't need to talk to you more about zoning. Uh, we need the architects to present what they're going to do. I'll come back towards the end and talk about the traffic management plan for the school. But uh, I'm going to turn it over to the architects. Is that you, uh, Craig? Yes, sir. That would be me. Um, am I supposed to open up the uh, PDF, share the PDF? Yes. Oh, OK. You should be able to share. Too. OK, I thought someone else was going to bring it up. But uh, let me see if I can get that up here on the screen. Share screen. Uh, okay, can you see it now? Should see the site plan. Good. Yes. Okay, so. Good, now we can. Okay. <laughs> you can see the whole thing there. Okay, so 
Uh, we mm. have the existing. Oh, no, actually, no, no, we, now we, we see it, see it now. You can't see it. No, Not you did now. change it. You changed another screen. Oh, okay. Hang on just a second. Sorry, I'm not uh, very well versed at this. Uh, I have completely lost it here. Where did the Zoom meeting go? So you, you might want to hit escape from your presentation. Okay, so let me try that. Can see your... Or if you want to email it to me, I can I can present it if that would be helpful. Mm. Uh, just a minute here. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. Okay, let me stop that and let me try to reshare it. Now we can see your presentation. Yes. Okay, I'm trying to zoom out. It's not uh, allowing me to. Well, that's okay. Let me see if I can do it on mine. I'll, I'll take it and you just tell I'll, me when. Okay, when there. How's that? There you can go. You, can you see the whole page now? Yes. Okay. So here's our building edition down here in blue. And the building edition is 22,000 square feet. Uh, the existing facility is two stories, and it's a total of about 78,000 square feet. Uh, we are, there's an existing, I don't, can you see my cursor moving on the screen? Yes. Okay, so there's an existing basketball court located here. That's going to be relocated down to this area. And uh, this is all existing parking here, the existing uh, employee lot up here. Uh, there's some portables here that are going to be moved off-site as part of this project. Um, let's see here. These are the uh, exterior building additions. Uh, the brick color is going to match the existing building. The height of the building is, it's about, uh, it's 28, 28 feet tall, but you can see there's uh, the finished floor elevation. The site drops off quite a bit towards the south. So we're about six feet above grade on the south end. So our total height here is about 34 feet, which is about what the existing building is. Um, let's see, this is, did you want to talk about this one, Well, Carl? Trey, could you go back and explain what the uses that are in that building and stuff? Oh, I'm so, sorry. Yeah. Yes, I sure can. Uh, so this is a fine arts edition. Uh, these classes are inside the existing building now. Basically, we're going to have band, theater, orchestra, choir, dance, and two art classrooms. And then they're supporting spaces like changing rooms and closets and such. So those spaces are, the existing spaces are not large enough for uh, the capacity that they have now. So those are going to be relocated into the building addition. And then the existing classes in the existing building are going to be converted into, into standard classrooms. Uh, so this is basically a fine arts wing. Okay. And Trey, can you zoom in a little bit on that? Yes, I hope so. There we go. Okay, so the... Um, th Really, there's there's not a whole lot changing to the traffic pattern around the school because all we're doing is adding that one addition. We're we're not really uh, inserting driveways into it. You can see uh, buses are planned uh, since this is a, a vanguard uh, situation. Uh, a lot of the uh, students arrive on campus by bus from other campuses, 
So the buses will line up on the side there, you can see. Um, there'll be one-way streets uh, surrounding um, the site, Castle and um, Montclair and, is that Montclair? Yes. Right here? Uh, yeah. And then Windmere yeah. when, when over yeah. here. When yeah. yeah. Um, those will be one-way streets, which it follows the same pattern that's pretty much out there today. Um, we really didn't have any way to move the traffic inside like we have when we're building a whole new campus with this one addition. So really, the, I don't see a whole lot changing to the uh, traffic patterns of what's out there today. Uh, I'd love to say we can move all the traffic inside and get it off the streets, but we just there's just not a way to do that on this site. With a, a small site and the unusual shape of it, there's just not any way to do that. So um, I guess that's um did you need to add anything else trey about trey um you mentioned some of the portables those three portables i guess are going away is that correct yes sir the they're shown dashed on this plan these three right here so is that um did this addition then free up space inside and that's sort of the reason for that for those going away yeah, it's yes, because they're sitting in the footprint of the building addition. So your cross hatched area right here is where the building addition is. So they are they are sitting right in the footprint. Okay. There's um, a, another two or three over in this area. I want you to go back to that other site plan, that first site plan. There we go. And those are staying right here. Those are staying right. Um, otherwise, uh, most of the bigger trees are staying. I don't think we're really losing any trees, Trey. Uh, not that I recall. And then we'll have to do additional landscaping around the addition. That's so correct. Right. Yes, the, there are uh, the larger trees are all existing to remain. And then there were some trees that were recently planted along Montclair and Castle and Windermere. And uh, they're small trees and they don't comply with the, the landscape requirements for the additions. So some of them we're having to remove and we're replacing with larger caliper trees, uh, but it will be brought up to the, the Dallas landscaping standards. So most of the new landscaping is down here on the south end of the site that we're placing. And that we're also uh, putting some new sidewalks in because currently there's no sidewalks along Windermere. And then some of the sidewalk along Castle is broken up, so we're replacing it. Uh, and then uh, the there's chain link fencing that goes around the entire site. And uh, some of some of the existing chain link fencing will be removed, and but there will be a new chain link fence that extends all the way around the property, or new new around here. But it, there will be a continuous fence around the property. Is what I meant to say. Some of it is still existing along here. Okay, um, I guess Mary Carmen, we can open it up for questions. Great, so uh, if you have a question and you would like to say it out loud, share it with us. Uh, you can raise your hand. Um, it's a little hand icon that's at the bottom of your screen, or you can uh, type it into the chat, whichever one you prefer. I have a couple of questions if no one else does. Sure, go ahead, please. Okay, uh, this is uh, Deborah Carpenter. I'm the plan commissioner for um, the area for District 6, you know, West Dallas and Northwest Dallas. I'm also very familiar with this school because I live in uh, the Western Heights neighborhood and have since 1988 and live about a block and a half from the school. Um, are you going to be adding any classrooms that require additional parking here or are all of these um, classroom, or, or is this entire addition area going to be the special classrooms that don't require additional parking? That's correct. All of the all of the new spaces that are being added are fine arts spaces, so we are not adding any additional parking. Okay, but it's not going to be possible to get rid of the uh, the remaining three uh, portables that are still on the west side of the campus, even with freeing up space inside the the school that exists there now with the new addition. The the ones that are 
located mm-hmm. here off of Montclair. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess that would be a, a question for the principal. I believe that uh, even with once once the addition is complete, it may be possible to get rid of those. I was, um, if I may, um, I was told that to remove portables, it's an additional $30,000. And I would like to keep those two portables for extra space since we are very, very confined in our building. And even with this new addition, we will be also because we keep gaining students. So I do not want to lose those two portables on the side. Okay, just out of curiosity, what extra $30,000 are you talking about? Um, zoning? This is what the planners uh, explained to me about when it when you have to go ahead and remove a portable, it takes money away from the project, like money away. Oh, okay. Yeah, so okay. that's it's, what I'm that's It's what I'm just about. removing the utilities that are, that are extended out to it and then remo- either removing the portable and relocating it elsewhere or demoing the portable. That's what those costs are. Okay. Well, this school just, I'm, I'm not as good at estimating time as I used to be, but it seems to me that this school just fairly recently went through a, a fairly extensive remodel. Um, the basketball court that you're talking about that's going to have to be moved to the south there, I, I believe that's a brand new basketball. I mean, to me, you, a brand new basketball. You're court. absolutely correct. In fact, uh, it was it was built, the basketball court was was built after the uh, I think it was the 2012 bond program that the mm-hmm. uh, interior was remodeled. They replaced all of the ceilings, uh, did a lot of HVAC replacement, remodeled the restrooms. And then after that was complete, they came back and poured that new basketball court. It's very unfortunate because it, it is brand new. Now, there's a, a fall protection surface on the basketball court that we are going to relocate to the, the new basketball court down here. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're also relocating the goals. So it's basically the pad. The pad will be new, but we're going to relocate the, all of the uh, accessories. Did this school get one of the required um, storm shelters that you have to have during the last remodel? Yes, it does have a storm shelter. Okay. Well, Trey, um, was that in the last remodel or in this? Edition? Oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's in this edition. There is there is no existing storm shelter. Oh, okay. So that's one of the things that's going to be covered in the new additional building. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Um, you were referencing the um the, uh, the additional landscaping, and there was a little like a little uh, walking path that was added to the play area. Yes. Uh, down that, there. What, was that part of like cool schools or something like that? Or was that, um, what was that? Cause you just said that the landscaping didn't really comply with the current article 10 requirements. For, for the- um, Alejandro may know the answer to that. It's a, I- it's a, it's a part of the Texas tree foundation. Okay. Uh, they, they're a, an organization who donated over $250,000 worth of equipment and trees and made our mm-hmm. campus more modern. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. I know Robert can. Um, yeah. It's unfortunate that, I mean, it's fortunate, I guess, that we're getting bigger trees. It's unfortunate that you have to dig up the ones that are there. Um, yeah, and, and Deborah, maybe we can work with yeah. Bill and figure out a way, because I'm with you. Uh, it, if it's a tree and it's growing and it's, and it's healthy, why are we digging it up just to just to comply? You know, I may right. have to work with Bill and figure out a way not to do that. I think there are a few that have that have been compromised, maybe through contact with the kids sure. or something that probably need to be replaced anyway. Right. But, yeah. Right. But, yeah but well, we can maybe do it. Bill can out there and look at them, and, and maybe we can save some. Right. Hi, Dan. Yeah. Hi, this is Alejandro De Maggio. I'm the project manager for this project. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to make it clear, we're not going to remove any trees from the site. The only trees that are going to be removed is the trees that are in the footprint of the new addition. So mm-hmm. any trees that are not on the way of the building will mm-hmm. not be removed. Those are not. They're, those trees are, will remain there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean... I understand that you don't have any option as to where you're going to relocate the basketball court and it's popular. It's going to be kind of unfortunate for the neighbors because that play area, that grassy area gets, gets a lot of use, you know, in outside school 
school areas and the, and the basketball court will be kind of right in the middle of the you know grassy part where kids play pickup games of whatever ball game they play these days. But I get that. Um, I don't really have any concerns with the traffic management plan. As I said, I'm very familiar with this area because, you know, I live a block, I live a block away and I've lived here for a long time and walk dogs and see what's going on. Um, it seems to me that given um, the space that you have there, there really isn't a way to do it any differently. And it, it seems to work reasonably well. I haven't heard any complaints and that's very unusual for um, school cases <laughs> that come to CPC because um, we get, school complaints constantly, but the neighbors here, and this is a, a, a well-regarded um, school in the area. And I, I think people think that it's, you know, an asset and it's, it's well run and it integrates pretty well. So I, I don't really have any concerns there, even though I'm sure there will be questions when it comes to CPC from other commissioners about um, the fact that the queuing and the buses are going to be um, on in the public right of way and not off, off the campus. Um, Carl, I had understood originally that the addition was going to be taller than it than it is. Yeah, and, and yeah. I think that I, 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 Trey, Trey shrunk it, I think. Yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, that's correct. Originally, the band hall, they had requested right. a 30, 30 foot ceiling mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, technical design guidelines call for a 20 foot ceiling. So eventually, and we were having budget issues as well. So Eventually, we went back and DISD agreed to the 20-foot ceiling. So that reduced the height of the building by 10 feet. Okay. Yeah, well, that's that's good because I could I could see that possibly arousing some um, concerns. Sure. It, would loom. it would loom for sure. Right, it would. As, as and, Trey uh, might remember, that was my, ah, the moment. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Right, exactly. And I, I don't know if you're aware or not, I mean, this is just for informational purposes, but, you know, to the south, there is construction going on from, uh, you know, next to the school, and that's going to be a, um, a senior multifamily project. So um, there's a lot of construction going on right there and will be uh, continuing for some time. Um, I don't believe I have any other questions other than that. I don't know if there's anyone else who's wanting to ask questions, but I, I think that's it from me. Alejandro, you. do you have a schedule that you can give them on, on when things might happen? I do not have a schedule at the moment. Uh, right now, we are working on submitting the civil uh, drawings to the city, and, uh, and then uh, we passing from 95% um, construction documents to 100% construction documents. Soon as we have the 100% construction documents, then we go into the um, submitting the site plan review for to the city. So right now we are not at that stage. We own the final step, steps for the sign phase. Uh, and then we're jumping into the permit set phase okay. and uh, and get everything, mm -hmm. the general contractor on board. And uh, and soon as we have the general contractor on board, we will have more specific dates uh, uh, estimated when we start construction and, and when we can get uh, things rolling on, on, on construction and on campus. And of course, by that time, we will have another community meeting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to give you update to the community uh, on on more specific dates for that. Okay. What do you think would be the earliest possible date, like the end of next year? You'd be getting started. <laughs> well, uh, right now it would take us a few more months uh, to for the final steps of the sign and then uh, the permitted uh, phase as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're thinking about uh, and this no later than this summer to keep this things rolling. Uh, it just depends to the city. Sometimes sure. the city takes a little bit longer than to get the permit approval, uh, right. and, and, and sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on the on the city on that. And then once the project gets started, what's the estimated time the you know, the duration of the of the project? Is it a year? Is it eighteen months? Is it Nine months. If for this side of the building, uh, I mean, it's just addition. Uh, I would not expect probably 14 months to be uh, complete. Uh, there's not, if you talk about just the period of construction, that would be around average 14 months. 
Sure. Okay. 14 to 18 months. I did think of something else. Um, I know the signs, the standard signs that DISD has been using on schools has been changed. Um, we've had some cases where you know, they're wanting to put up um, the kind of uh, signs that- Marquee sign. Yes, right, can display real time messages to, to the parents, whatever. Is that going to happen here? Trey, does this one get a marquee sign? I believe they just installed one. Yeah, in the we last already have one. Months. We have one. Yeah. We have okay, one. I, knew they put in, I knew they put in a new sign, but I, I wasn't sure if that new sign was still the, the kind of new signs that are being put in now. Okay. Yeah, that so we can so update much. it and we, we change the messages on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's it for me. Thank you. Um, Jeff uh, Howard seems to have a question if you want to unmute. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so just for clarification, uh, what's the current enrollment and are you able to, you know, absorb more students? Um, I'm at uh, six, almost 640. Um, mm -hmm. And if I don't get that new addition, I would not be able to. So it's really, it's a very good timing uh, for, for us, for sure. Because when I, when I was, when I had the privilege of being the principal of the school, that was one of the big tasks that the superintendent gave me was he wanted to see huge, huge enrollment numbers. And so mm -hmm. we've, we've gone up this year and we're, we're busting at the seams. So this is, this is very nice to have this addition. It will help us greatly. And how many more students would you be able to accommodate once you make the, the, the necessary upgrades? About a hundred. A hundred. Okay. And and for Claire, also one other thing about a Vanguard school. So does that mean you get students from everywhere? Or... Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And so most most come in by car or by bus or a mix? It's a mix. All right. That answers my questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of questions just um, procedurally. Can someone share the case number, the zoning case number, and when it was filed? Yes, let me. Um, the case number is... Z212-239, and let me, I'll get back to you with a case number. I can look it up. Oh, the date it was filed, if you don't mind. If you want to go to okay. another question, I'll, I will jump and, on there as soon as I dig it up. I'm sorry, what's, April what's 15th. The, April 15th. And then what is the base zoning right now, and what's the what's the change in the request? I see that your the request is to add this additional building, but what is the actual change in zoning? That's being requested. Uh, so the change in zoning, it, it, today it's zoned R75, which is a single family district, 7,500 square foot minimum lot size. In the change, um, we originally asked for a PD, uh, but we did some minor modifications and some clarification on stuff. So now we've changed that to an SUP, a specific use permit, which would leave the uh, underlying zoning at R75. Um, and then would add a, a public school use, public school other than an open enrollment charter school is the actual technical term. And it would be based on basically a trade go back to that site plan, but basically that site plan uh, that would show the existing school, the parking, everything. Site plan doesn't show trees, that's uh, on a landscape plan, but it would show that and that's what the zoning would allow. That school and that shape, well, that's, square footage um, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so it would be that. It would be basically allows the single family and a school in that configuration cycle. Okay, so when the school was originally built, I think I heard someone say this earlier that the SUP was not required. No, it, was not required for the city of Dallas didn't require zoning for public schools until 1989. And as long as okay. you didn't do an addition, Oh, there's lots of schools in Dallas that, that are still zoned single family. As long as you don't do an addition more than 2,000 square feet, obviously this is a lot more than 2,000 square feet, you don't need zoning. If you just renovated the inside, that's fine. Um, if you just change the parking, that's fine. But if you do an addition of more than 2,000 square feet, you have to come into compliance with zoning. Got you. Thank you so much for clarifying. Yes. That's all I had. Mm -hmm. If there are any other questions, again, um, raise your hand or um, jump in and or, or put it in the chat and we'll read it up. I do have a question. Uh, Carl, um, 
you know, normally the schools end up going the PD route because there are certain deviations that seem to occur from standard code with schools, whether it's sure. intrusions into the setback or parking in the front yard or landscaping or fencing. And I don't know what the word, sometimes it's high, but not here. Sure. Um, are none of these going to, or are none of the normal exceptions going to be needed here? No, um, we did have a six foot fence that we'd love to have around there, but um, Castle and Walmsley are both front yards, just because mm -hmm. that's the way the code is. So um, we've lowered some of the fences to comply with it. Um, we're not thrilled about that, but um, the staff has asked us not to do PDs. I think they've told you that. Um, obviously some of those portables and some of the parking is in the front yard, but it's existing. So we won't mm -hmm. fix those with a PD. Um, and uh, the way the staff now interpret the residential proximity slope, which is different than a staff previously interpreted it, um, the building will comply with the proximity slope. They could, you just elaborate, it. could you elaborate a little bit on that? How the staff is, is now? Well, um, um, it's a single family it's district. It's R75. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, across the street is R75 or R something, maybe R5. That's no, R75, no, the whole neighborhood. No. Yeah, so um, uh, pre previous, well, they now interpret to say that single family, the single family doesn't generate any RPS. Previously, they interpreted to say it doesn't generate any RPS unless you're, because obviously the only thing that can penetrate the RPS is height wise is an institutional use. That's what the code allows. Mm -hmm. you can go, the school can go to any height as long as it complies with the FAA rules for right. overflight. Well, obviously there's no FAA rules here. So we could have a 200 foot high school. Obviously we're not, but it used to be they interpreted to say institutional uses in an R75 still had to comply with the RPS. Right. Now they're saying, doesn't make any difference what the use is. The R and the to the R, the two R districts don't have any RPS no matter the height. I I don't get to vote. I disagree no, with that. I no, I, I disagree with it entirely, but I can take that up with staff some other time. Yeah, you know, but my, my concern was as I can have a church, which is an institution used yeah. to be 50 feet high, five feet from a house, and that's just right. not not too good. No. No, not at all. And what's the lot coverage come out to be on this site? With the you know, um, I don't know, Trey, do you have that in the, I think you probably have that in, I don't have the site plan. It may be in that table that was too yeah, small. Yeah, it's, it's on the site plan. Hang on just a second. Let me take a look at that. I don't I mean, have that be, site plan open. I mean, it could be as much as what, is it 60% Carl? 25% I think is the most you can have in institutional. Uh, I thought it was higher. Maybe, more than, maybe it is 60. I, I I, I think it was, think. Uh, yeah. They don't yeah, but I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's close to that. I don't right. really think it's close to that. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I'll send it to you in an email if that's okay. Okay. Thank I you. can't get mine to open up either. <laughs> All right. I think, I, I can't think of anything else. Uh, I'm looking at the site plan. I thought we had it on there, but I'm not seeing it, it now. It should be in that legend up there. It probably it's was, the, it was too small to see. Well, you don't have it in there. Oh no, 33 and a half percent. Okay. Oh, there it is. I don't I can't see it. Which which probably is not totally different than what it is that now because you're taking away some portables that were a lot of that already there. Mm -hmm. So it's probably not that different than what it is today. Great. So thank you so much for these questions. Um, if there's any more, please feel free to put them in the chat or raise your hand. Uh, we will have add this presentation to the web page for the project. And those uh, pages for those projects can be found at www.dallasisd.org slash bond 2020. So if you want to uh, visit that um, to find more information about this project and, and a lot of the other projects we are doing, thanks to the generosity of uh, Dallas citizens who approved this um, bond program. Um, if there are no more questions, um, can I ask um, Trustee Carrion, see if he has a few words to uh, close us out and then Chief Alfred. 
Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for your time. I just want to, I won't hold anyone here much longer. I just want to say thank you, and I want to just uh, echo what folks have said. Uh, we get to do cool things like this in Dallas ISD. You're seeing it throughout uh, the district. You're seeing it throughout uh, um, District 8, for sure, uh, because of the support of, of Dallas voters. And so uh, thank you all for taking interest and coming and asking great questions so that we can make sure that this project is is uh, just uh, completely has complete support uh, of the community. So again, if you have any questions uh, after this and want to reach out, uh, please do not hesitate to do so. I'm, I'm happy to, 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 to listen and to make this project even better for us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Trustee Carrion, and uh, um, it's always an honor for the bond uh, uh, office to take part in these projects. You know, uh, I was happy to hear that this is looked at as a jewel and an asset to the neighborhood community, and so this is just going to father that uh, that enhancement to that community and sound like it's well deserved. So, with that, uh, I'll see you guys at the groundbreaking is our next big milestone, and then even better than the groundbreaking is the ribbon cutting. So. Uh, be looking for us at the next two milestones. Thank you guys and have a good night. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you.